Today on Art Scene will feature from the Clock Tower Cabaret, Denver's First Lady Mary Louise Lee, the 30th anniversary of the Denver Public Art Program, a special performance for Denver Public School students of Hamilton, and the Mayor's Awards for Excellence in Arts and Culture winner, Irene Vilar. Not every city can boast a first lady who is also an extraordinary musical talent, but we can. Hey, I'm Bobby Lefebvre, and this time on Art Scene, we're here at the Clock Tower Cabaret with the amazing Mary Louise Lee and her tribute to Aretha Franklin. All right, so we are here backstage with Mary Louise Lee getting ready to chat with her. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. Oh, thank you for being here. You know, we featured a, a segment on our show last month uh, around the Cherry Creek Arts Festival celebrating you as a distinguished patron. And, and through that, we found out that you've been involved in music pretty much your whole life. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk to us a little bit about how you came to music? I started singing when I was three, and my parents got me started. They were singing in the church choir and um, so that's when I started singing with the church choir and by the age of five I was directing the children's choir. <laughs> wow. So yeah, I've been singing a long time and then just from there I've just got involved with with dance and with p playing the uh, piano and playing the flute and so it, it's been in my blood for a very long time. So singing, dancing, music, yes. family, oh, yeah. and, and as you were growing up, who were some of the influences that you kind of looked up to to kind of get you to where you are now? My parents, definitely my parents, and my mom, what a stage mom she has been throughout the years, and just my whole family. I have three older brothers, so I always say that because I had three older brothers, I yelled at them all the time, <laughs> so I know how to project. Sure. So, yeah, they've helped me a lot. <laughs> What about musical influences? Anybody in particular when you were younger, mm -hmm. as you were growing in your career, or maybe even now? Well, you know, my family, my parents always played all different types of music, but I heard a lot of records of Tina Turner and Aretha Franklin and, uh, you know, the Beatles. And, and, and so we heard a, a wide arrangement or a potpourri of mm -hmm. music, I should say, um, throughout my life. And so um, I just have an appreciation for all different types. Now I listen a lot to and sing a lot of Shaka Khan, uh, Anita Baker, mm -hmm. um, Whitney Houston. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, so love those. Absolutely. Wonderful influence. So important to have a, a diverse background like that mm -hmm. when you're an artist, to have that influence from multiple types of music sure. and things like that. And so tonight, obviously, we're here because you're doing an Aretha Franklin tribute, right? Yes. So how did this project kind of sort of come to be? Well, you know, um, we've been here at the Clock Tower before. We just got through last year, as a matter of fact, doing a tribute to Whitney Houston, and which was awesome. We had a wonderful time doing that, and she has such mu wonderful music. Um, they asked us to come back, and they said, who would you want to do? And mm. we thought about it, and we thought about it, we were like, oh, of course, Riri. Yeah. You've got to do her. She's got a wonderful songbook. So we decided to do this, and uh, we did it in November, and then they asked us back to do it again. I like to count So how's it been this run, this new run? How's what have you found different from the last one, and what do you really enjoy about this show? You know, I just we just all have such a wonderful time doing it, and just singing the songs of Aretha that I was hearing when I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. My mom, all these scratch records now of Aretha Franklin because <laughs> she played them so much. Sure. But just listening to that, and it's just reminiscing about when I was younger, and um, her songs have so much meaning. Absolutely. And um, so it, it's just 
we have a great time. So. Yeah, yeah, and you're with your band, right? Tell, oh, us, yeah. tell me a little bit about your band. Well, this band has been in existence for 12 years wow. now. And uh, the bass player and I, we started from the beginning. Um, but we have a four-piece rhythm section and then three backup singers. And tonight we have Tony Exum Jr. Um, on saxophone as our guest artist. So, wow. yeah, so we just have a really good time. Yeah, they told me we got a table in the back so we get to watch the show. I'm really, really right. excited about I'm that. Excited so you when you're not it. doing Aretha Franklin, what yes. other types of performances do you do around the city? What have you worked on? What are you working on now? What do you mm -hmm. see for yourself in the future? Well, I just completed Lady Day at Emerson's Barn Grill. Um, at the Galleria Theater in the Denver Center of Performing Arts. Um, and we ran for eight weeks on a Monday. Um, and the before then, we were at the Vintage Theater doing the show for five weeks. Wonderful, wonderful show that I'm so glad to be a part of. It was about the life of Billie Holiday mm. and all of her, the loss and the addictions and the abuse that she suffered throughout her life. Mm -hmm. And it's actually four, it takes place four months before she passed away. Um, mm -hmm. But um, very exhilarating piece of work that um, I was so happy to do. Sure, tell me a little bit more about that because you know Billie Holiday was a very complex person between mm -hmm. all of the triumph of being an amazing vocalist and this this musician that did so much but battling with alcohol and drug addiction mm -hmm. well at the same time growing up in a time where you know black artists were treated as second-class citizens sure. dealing with white supremacy and racism mm -hmm. some of the same things that we're dealing with today exactly. what's it like tapping into that character to, to really you know get into that space what an honor to it was to channel her because I actually channeled her and you know it was a very emotional piece of work that I've ever done. Mm -hmm. um, I have done it before 14, 15 years ago and um, just the different time of, of doing that piece and, and although in 2018 a lot of things are going on um, now that it was in 1958 sure. and um, it is just um, it was very emotional, and um, but very exhilarating. And uh, so it's just been so awesome bringing that show back and revising it. And um, it, it's just been a wonderful thing for me. Yeah. Um, but that, doing Miss Aretha, I don't think I have any more room for anything no, else. No, no, no. I'm that tired. Like I mean, that's like two ends of the bit. spectrum. Um, I'm getting ready to do Ain't Misbehaving at Littleton Town Art Center. And so I'm excited. It's, it's a lot going on besides the band. I mean, sure. the band's got a lot of stuff coming up as well. You're going to also do a Tina Turner tribute yes. show? Yeah, yes. tell me about that. So we decided that our next tribute show is going to be Tina Turner, the amazing Tina Turner. Yeah. Um, we were thinking about, we didn't know exactly who we wanted to do next, and we were like, okay, so who, we, we could do there. We, but it was like looking at Tina's songbook and, and her life, and uh, we're just excited to do it. We're wow. going to do some amazing things and add some some dancers and add because I'm not going to get up there and dance. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. But we're yeah. going to have a wonderful time doing that. When can we expect this show? That is going to be every Saturday in September okay. of this year. All right. Yes. Something to look forward to. Yes. Great. Yes. <laughs> Rolling on the river. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, you're no stranger to our show. A couple of years ago, we got to fo uh, feature your Bringing Back the That's Arts Organization, right? right? Yes. Where we're, you know, really, we were talking about bringing music and ed arts education into young people's lives. Mm -hmm. Talk to us a little bit about what the importance is for young people to have access to the arts. Well, I know the importance of having music, dance, uh, visual arts in your life. You know, it helps you stay balanced. It keeps that brain focused and, and balanced. Mm -hmm. um, I am a product of the Denver Public Schools, so I I know going to a dance class, it helped me with my math class. Going to a music class, it helped with a social studies class. So it, it all kind of 
falls in there together. Um, with Bringing Back the Arts, we help to restore the arts education programs in Denver schools. We provide access to our cultural institutions, and then we promote our local artists. And you came when we were doing our music competition mm -hmm. and uh, for high school students, and they come, and it's like a battle of the bands thing, but it's not just bands. We have uh, soloists, we have rap artists, we have choirs even that have come to do things, and jazz artists. and things. So, just full of talent. Yeah. But not only that, I mean, we have a visual arts competition and then we have a dance showcase that we collaborate with Denver Arts and Venues. And so we're, we're and then we have an internship program for our, our juniors and seniors in high school and giving them opportunities at different arts organizations in throughout the city. Take a shot, take a shot, and I'm away my I know recently you got to hang out with a bunch of DPS students oh, to yeah. see Hamilton, uh, right? Yeah, what was it cool. like to have a theater full of kids watching this, you know, paradigm shifting Broadway show? Oh, it was so cool. Just walking out there on the stage and seeing all these young faces and they all had smiles on their face and they were just excited <laughs> about it. Hello, how y'all doing? We definitely want kids to be a part of that. They have to experience things like that to let them know that this could be you on the stage. Yeah. You know, um, to, so it was cool. It yeah. was so cool. I was so glad to be there and be a part of it. And your life is so inspiring. You're, you're involved in so many things. Recently, you were just honored by Up With People, right? Yes. Talk to me about your involvement with, with them. They, you know, thanked me for the work that I do in the community with the arts and with youth. And that, I was so honored mm -hmm. for that award. Um, you know, I have, I remember that I used to want to be in Up With People when I was younger mm -hmm. and it just never happened. I was doing other things, but what an organization. Um, they do such wonderful things throughout the world for youth and uh, it, it, I was just very honored to sure, be Sure, sure. And you know, of course, you're, a, you're an artistic force of your own and you're also the first lady of Denver, yeah. right? So, so yeah. what, what is that like, balancing everything oh, else with that? Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, it's like there are days when I'm like, oh, I'm first lady. You know, yeah. I will go to different functions and they're saying, hey, are you going to sing? I'm like, I'm first lady tonight. You know, so <laughs> I, I have to wear many hats, you know, but um, I, I try to balance them all and, you know, just do what I do. I'm, I'm Mary Louise Lee. I'm the performer, the, the singer, actress who moves well, who happens to be First Lady of Denver. Absolutely. So that, that's how that's how it stands right there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, thanks for chatting <laughs> with us. Thank you so um, much. We look forward to seeing the show. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Mary Louise Lee, y'all. An amazing talent and an amazing woman. It's a big year for Denver Arts and Venues. It's the 30th anniversary of the public art program and you can help celebrate. It's an exciting year for the Denver Public Art Program being in its 30th year. The city has approximately 400 artworks in its collection throughout the city and county of Denver. So the program sets aside 1% of every new construction budget of a million dollars or more that the city undertakes for the inclusion of public art. And in that time, the city has invested more than $40 million in public art. We live in Castle Rock down south and you know we like to make the drive up here just because we love the museum here. Uh, it's one of our favorite things to do together and uh, you know not only the art inside the museum but um, outside uh, the museum as well you know we like to look uh, walk around look at the different sculptures and so forth so we just we love it down here. No, it's fantastic that everyone uh, likes the art and, and play, uh, plays it in public so everyone can enjoy uh, the, uh, the arts. Uh, it's very unique. It's all one of a kind. So just now I went to the public library. I saw a big car, um, horse standing, sitting on a chair. Oh, it's amazing. We know that there are some very recognizable pieces out there like the Blue Bear and the Mustang at the airport. But we're also encouraging people to get out there and, and seek some of the pieces that are maybe uh, hidden in plain sight or might be in your neighborhood that you might, uh, might see every day, 
but uh, might need to take another closer look at. Uh, the piece behind me is called Flower Girl. It's at the Denver Botanic Gardens. It's by a Colorado artist named Madeline Weiner. It's one of my favorite pieces, uh, recently acquired in the collection about two years ago. What's your um, favorite art you like? I like that huge bloom and that um, sweeping thing. Um, I think like the huge paper towels are kind of the funniest part. The public art that I see today is like really unique, really um, special. For as long as I've been here, I've seen it. And I, was, I always wondered what what is the meaning of just like a broom sweeping up dust until now and then I see the artist just thinking about so many things. It makes me proud of our city. It makes me proud to live in a city that values art and culture and um, it's exciting for me to be able to share it with, with the residents of Denver as well as visitors of Denver. We just uh, visited uh, this morning as first here and uh, we looked at the statues and yeah, the bronze uh, statues are yeah, very nice. It's amazing, there are so many arts in Denver, so I'm trying to explore the city and uh, just get some memory, take some pictures. Most of all, we really just want people to share their excitement and enthusiasm for the public art collection with us. What we're doing this year is we're asking people to share their most favorite pieces of public art with us on social media. We want people to submit their most creative interpretations of public art or just their best photographs. And that might be interacting with the piece, it might be taking the best selfie with the piece, uh, might be maybe you're a photographer and you want to capture a really interesting shot in, in the best light. So any of those would be great. You can post your photographs on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter with the hashtag DenverPublicArt30. Staff and a couple other judges will look at those photographs if you have a public profile, and we will choose to exhibit and print photographs at the end of the year for an exhibition in the Buell Theater. All right, I'm gonna go take my selfie next to some public art. Stay tuned, we'll be back with more art scene. We've got the Hamilton Education Program and the Mayor's Awards for Excellence in Arts and Culture winner, Irene Vilar. And we are back on art scene. Last month, some Denver area students and teachers got a private ticket to one of the hottest shows in town, Hamilton and some of the students even got to perform some work of their own. I'm past patiently waiting, I'm passionately smashing every expectation, every action. So the Hamilton Education Program um, started in the fall of 2015. I'm thinking past This is actually our third year running the program in New York City. Shot. And then because it was going so well in New York City, we expanded to Chicago, and then we decided to go on tour. So we've been able to offer the program to um, almost all of the tour cities that Hamilton has visited thus far. I mean, it's a great educational tool, obviously. It's also a great um, introduction to the arts. Today is a day of celebrating the arts, of celebrating creativity, of celebrating each of you as scholars and as artists. Every school that participates submits a video of what they have determined is their best student performance for a chance to, to perform on stage. Gilder Lerman looks through all of the videos um, and we choose um, the best 12 to 15 performances based on historical integrity, um, creative, uh, creative piece, how it is, and um, originality. It's just such a cool process to see these Title I schools go from curriculum, uh, you know, studying the revolution and then creating their own pieces and then coming here and getting to perform them on the Hamilton stage and getting to ask questions of the actors and then see the show itself. It's like such a well-rounded program, nothing like I ever had, I think, uh, growing up in schools. And so um, just an awesome opportunity and, and I'm really grateful to have been here to see it. So I bust a cap when I pass the mall's match and back and attack. No laughs in this rap. This is the day I lost everything I had. I was so nervous. I was excited. I was surprised that I was able to pull it off. It was fun and just really exhilarating to me. No way, no way. Hamilton, I promise that you will rule the day. They've worked very, very hard to get here, and I can tell you that performing on this stage in front of 2,800 people is not an easy feat. 
So let's make sure we show nothing but mad love. Can you say show love? Show love! Show love! Show love! All right! White men afraid to have real conversations. Avoiding the potential persuasion, scared of female worldview revelations. So the same. So the program um, lasts about two to three months. Um, once the schools are accepted, they get access to um, the exclusive Hamilton Education Program website, which has videos um, from Lin Manuel Miranda and Ron Chernow on kind of how they created the musical. Um, it also consists of videos from original cast members discussing uh, the primary source documents that are related to their characters and kind of how it feels to be playing these you know, characters from the founding era, but in the 21st century. And they also get access to our curriculum that consists of primary source documents that are related to the songs of Hamilton. And the students analyze um, the primary source documents, they then analyze the music, and see how Lin-Manuel Miranda was able to kind of meld the music and, and the documents. They then follow Lin's same creative process. They do their own research into the founding era and they then create their own performance pieces, 14 of which you saw today on stage. Um, and the scene that the students did today was actually a true story of when Peggy saved her family during the Revolutionary War and the British soldiers were attacking the Schuyler Mansion um, up near Albany um, and she was able to, to save her family and get them to safety. Es que la vida es justa y tarde o temprano siempre justa. I wrote about um, Aaron Burr and how he killed Hamilton and just like kind of the feelings I would think he would have felt during that those times where he lost his family and everything and all the rough times he went through. How my life would unfold. Thank you. definitely the most exciting thing to happen <laughs> to education, to theater um, in a very, very long time. And I think that the way that Lynn was able to really stay as true to history as he did and put in the time to, to do that makes it that much more valuable as an educational tool. Um, because unlike some other you know, history movies or theater that might not be totally accurate, he really did take the time to do his research. Um, and the time that he took is really what we use to inspire the students to take their time to really dig into the primary sources and understand where these characters are coming from, from their own words, right? Not from what your teacher tells you or not from what a textbook tells you, but really look at what they wrote so that you can get an understanding of their character and that you can then be creative after that. So it's also a really great pairing of you know, theater and history together. It's just a really wonderful, wonderful musical program and we're so lucky to be partnering with them. Uh, okay, a couple more questions. How has education played a role in the path you've taken? And, and uh, tag on to that if you have any advice for the students out here who want to pursue a career in theater or arts. Start working on things now, guys. I waited too long. I didn't write my first song until I was 21. All right? Write, produce, think, and just start doing it now, please. Okay? Because you are the future. All right? And that's up so stupid. At first, I really didn't know much about Hamilton, but then as I moved on longer and farther into the project, I got to learn about Aaron Burr's and Hamilton's past, like how they were kind of rivals, but also friends and peers. I think it's a hit because it brings a new style of a musical. It's different. It's very creative to change something that's historical into something that's very like memorable. It was great. I mean some of the, the pieces were so thought provoking and just insightful and you know we all know now the history of you know this story and but I, I heard things that you know I don't hear in the show and I heard them in a different way and um, so it's you know it's the future. It's the, the Lin Manuel's of the future so it's it's really cool to see. Oh, Denver totally brought it. Um, it was our first um, all Spanish scene. Quieren llevar. Yo no quiero ser un prisionero. Por favor, protege a tu hijo y protege al mío. Y no abras la puerta, por favor. The poem about remember the ladies from our, the young man, which was wonderful. We all deserve a voice. There is no choice. We fight alongside you. So why do you deprive us of our rights? I hope one day we gain sights where women are equal to men, and all this injustice ends. I desire. You will remember the ladies. Um, 
and the song about writing her way out, the spoken word. I was one swallowed by waves, entwined in an abuse of poverty, melted down below a molten wax seal of my own fate. I wrote my way out. Um, the kids in Denver did an amazing, amazing job. I want to do some more thank yous. I got to thank you uh, to the partners who make the Hamilton Education Program possible. Hamilton, the Gilder Lerman Institute of American History, Denver Public Schools, and the City of Denver. Just thank you to Denver, the students and teachers. Um, it was a pleasure to work with all of them. It was a life-changing experience because I've never performed in front of a big audience before. The, like, it's really awesome. <laughs> There are many people in our city making a difference through the arts. One of them is a Mayor's Award for Excellence in Arts and Culture winner, Irene Vilar. Americas for Conservation in the Arts is very bold. It's very small, and yet it's so big. In America, arts and culture seem to be so separated and very much not relevant to communities at large. And coming from a Latino culture that everything that we say, it's embedded in, in beauty, right? And so I realized that that was an asset that we had and we could use it. AFCA's programs, they all share this urgent need to advance a healthy environment for everybody and betting on arts and culture to do that. So we have an annual festival, the America's Latino Eco Festival. Now we're in our fifth year. It takes place in Denver, hosted by Latinos. And so that's one of the ways we do it. We also do it through a publishing arm, intent on advancing diversity and conservation in books. We have expanded quite a bit, working with schools, local community organizations, agencies. We're connecting people to the outdoors that oftentimes seem so far and removed from their reality. But in general, the programming itself is just, they enjoy it and they feel that there's an inner growth. It's like we're all so busy, right? And I think that most of the time we are not inhabiting our bodies. One of the things that great art does is brings you back inside. You feel that the parameters of meaning have grown for yourself and that somehow you're connected and somehow you're a better person. And that's the magic of art. Thanks to Mary Louise Lee and the Clock Tower Cabaret for having us. I'm Bobby Lefebvre. We'll see you next time as we discover more of Denver's art scene. In the meantime, there's more Aretha Franklin tribute happening inside. I'm going to check it out.